So once the once the euro starts hyperinflating in Germany, then you know it's it, other countries that use the euro will follow. It might take some time, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, back in back in Weimar, it was just Germany using the Deutsche Mark, but now it's a wider area, so it's probably going to start somewhere, and then the infection spreads. That's how an infection spreads. But it's not really an infection; it's a cure. I'm not really worried about the collapse. Uh, I'm not worried about much economically because I already see what's going to happen. Uh, I don't know exactly when. I know it's close. And yeah, everyone wants to know exact timing. If, ever, if anyone knew exact timing, they could be, you know, billionaires. And But I'm not worried about collapse. What I'm worried about is that people won't turn around fast enough and they'll just keep getting pickpocketed, you know, for years to come until they really become destitute. Germany has in its cultural consciousness what hyperinflation is. When people point to hyperinflation and say, oh, Weimar, 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 everyone knows it's Weimar. Um, other countries have experienced it, but Germany is definitely the most famous. And uh, a cultural memory is very important for how a culture behaves under certain circumstances. Um, it changes the way an entire nation behaves. And hyperinflation, um, it, 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 is, it is qualitatively different from regular price, consumer price increases. Because with regular consumer price increases, you might have, you know, still if you go back to that pickpocket analogy, somebody's taking money from your pocket and you don't realize it. So you're not going to turn around and punch him in the face and he's going to keep taking money from you. But once you turn around and you see and, and this guy's still taking money from you and he's like just doing it in broad daylight and you're like looking at him, you'll try, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll get physical. You'll say, get away from me. Stop taking my money and you'll punch him in the face. And then he's going to have a much harder time taking money from you. Really, the flip to hyperinflation is basically when everyone realizes all the way down to like just a, a fast food worker who says, I got to get rid of my paycheck right now or I'm going to lose it. He doesn't have to understand anything except for that. So it's everyone acting together. When everyone acts together, it doesn't matter what the central bank does anymore because, you know, what's the what's the fast food worker going to say? Oh, well, the, the Bundesbank or the ECB has raised interest rates by 20 percent. I guess I don't have to get rid of this money. He's not going to say that. It, when it's already on the street, you can't control it anymore. When it, when it's in the banks, you can control it because the banks and the central bank work together and they say, okay, I'm going to do this, you're going to do that. And they'll say, okay, we got to control the public. Once it's in the public's hands, that's it. It's over. And uh, the, the, the fact that Germany has a cultural memory means the public has a cultural memory that when from their grandparents and probably from their public school system, when this happens, you got to get rid of the money fast. So they're going to be the first to do it. It seems like Germany should be the first to wake up. Maybe they won't. Maybe it'll be some other weird country that we never heard of. Maybe it'll be Lithuania. I don't know. Um, but it, it makes sense that Germany would be the first to wake up because they're in the most dire straits when it comes to energy right now. Uh, they've been cut off of gas almost entirely. Uh, so they're, they're pretty worn out. And they have a cultural memory and they all they use the same currency as everyone else. So once the, once the euro starts hyperinflating in Germany, then you know it's it, other countries that use the euro will follow it might take some time um but uh yeah i mean back in back in weimar it was just germany using the deutsche mark but now it's a wider area so it's probably going to start somewhere and then the infection spread that's how an infection spreads but it's not really an infection it's a cure um so what i'm seeing in the silver market now is different from uh from 2008 or 2011 Whereas the, and this comes back to when is the, the manipulation end. And the manipulation for me is just generally that there is a silver futures market that you can sell more paper than physical that exists. But that's true in any futures market, it's gas and coal and whatever. And that's why you see these short squeezes and whatever nickel or, or gas or, or natural gas, whatever it might be, because you have more paper and you don't have enough physical. And that's what happens when, when it just happens to be in the precious metals too. You know, if we take what was happening in, two, in, let's say, 2011, when silver was moving to 50 very quickly, if you look at the physical premiums, they were actually negative, negative premiums, meaning it was cheaper to buy a physical coin of silver than it was to buy a share of SLV. That was, you know, at the $40, $50 area. Uh, so what that shows, it was just paper speculation. It was just like people saying, oh, this thing with three letters, SLV, maybe they didn't even know what it was, is going up. So they tried to chase it and then they all got smashed. So now what's happening is that, that, that what's happening is the premiums are staying up. The demand is in the physical market. People are buying coins now. That did not happen in 2011, did not happen in 20, 2008 very much. It happened a little bit. Now it's happening very strongly. We, I mean, how many people really understand what money is? Even, of, even among the camp, 
uh, of you know even the sound money camp there's this whole bitcoin camp and they have some correct ideas but i'm very not very much not in the bitcoin camp not that i think it's a problem but i don't think it's going to survive a monetary collapse because i think it's just another derivative of of money on top of the other layers what we're doing is we're not trying to wake up the average people i'm not i don't talk to the average person um i'm t i talk to the people like you that we're trying to get the people that sort of kind of understand that, that it's money but they don't get it quite perfectly nobody gets it perfectly i don't get it perfectly uh but we're trying to wake up the leaders of various countries communities all around the world so that they have as much money as possible so that they can retake the reins of society when everything collapses and really help people so we don't devolve into this chaotic dystopian nightmare uh we want as much we the leaders want we want the leaders to have on which, whichever level leader that you are to have as much money as possible real money which means you'll have as much power as possible which means you'll be able to counteract you know the bad actors here that are trying to restart the inflationary system and the Weimar hyperinflation you could buy a a nice house in Berlin for about you know a hundred dollars uh, if we had foreign exchange students good you know exchanging a hundred dollar bills for this you know nice pieces of real estate in downtown Berlin so a hundred dollars back then it was twenty one dollars twenty twenty sixty five or something an ounce between twenty and twenty one dollars an ounce for an ounce of gold right so a hundred dollar bill is about five ounces of gold and in a monetary crisis what generally happens is central banks and banks go after gold the public can't go after gold because it's too expensive so they go after silver and then the 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 gold to silver ratio descends to about 15 to 1 which is historically the monetary average before 1873 when silver was demonetized so in a, in an environment where silver coins are money along with gold then you generally have something around a 15 to 1 ratio so 5 ounces times 15 is 75 is it going to last no it's not going to last it's not going to be like you're going to have like a steady you know, market of 75 ounces for a house. I'm saying at the peak of a panic, when people need silver because the gold substitutes don't work, and when gold substitutes don't work, you need actual silver to divide gold into retail amounts for maybe a few weeks, maybe a month or two at most, and that's even pushing it. Then in a, in a panic, when people need physical coins to survive because they need to divide labor, then you could probably buy a house with 75 ounces of silver. So when you have that price, do it. And I'm not talking about predicting the end of days or anything or, or using numbers and math. I'm not, I'm just talking about logic. Um, you know, I'll just give one example, one thing that I talked about. Uh, and in, in a modern sense, it takes uh, what we could say since 1934, we could say since 1971, but really the inflationary cycle started before 1971. That was just an admission that, you know, the inflation is here and we can't keep this pretend price of gold anymore. But, but what I would like to see, what should be done, is that you know like ron paul's idea of competing currencies like when you have private markets they tend to they tend to run more efficiently so money money is just another market it's just the most marketable commodity that's what it is even now it's just we use inflated substitutes so you know in the immediate aftermath you'd probably have you know gold companies or gold miners issuing paper certificates to their shareholders and then those could be traded and then, uh, uh, and then you'd have you'd have you know goldsmiths and silversmiths you know making their money, and you know silver would be in the immediate aftermath you'd need it. But once you'd have functioning gold substitutes, could be a gold black gold backed blockchain, could be more paper. You know we'll probably you know keep the digital. It'll probably be a gold backed blockchain. I see because that's most efficient. Um, but in general, uh, stockpiling any commodity now is going to help because people are going to need real assets once the money is no longer functional.